It is such an honor for Life Church to host this, and it's such an honor to be a speaker, to represent um, the church uh, that I belong to, and to speak on behalf of the body of Christ in the power of the Spirit for what He wants to accomplish today, because I believe that He is ready to speak to all of us. I, I just want you to all lean in. I believe He wants to um, prepare our hearts our spiritual eyes and ears, because I think we'll all receive uh, something that maybe we weren't expecting. And so it's going to be a wonderful day. Um, I believe that we're also all here because we know that we can make a greater impact. We can become more effective. We can do a better job at benefiting every child that is without a family and that security and that stability that they need. So let's dive in. In Matthew 25, Jesus, when he, he tells us, guys, when I come in all my glory with all my angels host around me, I'm going to gather all the nations of people of the earth. And I'm going to be like a shepherd that will separate the peoples like the sheep from the goat, goats. And I'm going to turn to my right and look at the sheep, my people, and I'm going to say to them, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, and take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Because I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. And I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes. You clothed me. You looked after me when I was in prison. And the righteous people will reply, Lord, when did we ever do this? When did we see you in need and help you? But the king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these, you did unto me. It's interesting that the body of Christ, the righteous that our Lord, King of Kings, is speaking to, they were awakened, they were aware of the needs of humanity, and they were engaged in it. They just didn't aware, they weren't fully aware that they were doing it as unto the Lord, that it was like Jesus there before them. But they were alert, they were aware, and I feel like the church must awaken, and it's our job to help awaken them to take action by a continual awareness. And that's why I believe this is so important that we're here today. And the message that I want to bring to the church is that we must all do whatever we can, all of us, for the orphan. Uh, I love what John Wesley said. He said, do, do all the good you can, by all the means you can, and all the ways you can, and all the places you can, at all the times you can, do all the people you can, as long as you ever can. Amen. <laughs> He's got it. But see, I'm living proof that awareness works. Because I was one of those people, and maybe you were too, that thought the orphan, the adoption, the foster parenting thing is just for specifically called people to do those things. And so I, it didn't really hit my heart the way I believe that God wants it to hit our hearts in the church. And so it really took some awareness, and I had the uh, fortunate opportunity to go on a ministry bus tour here in my city of Oklahoma City. And they, they took various ladies down to see different ministries, different uh, government social services. And uh, it was a lot to take in in one day as we saw so many things, learned so many things. But for a week, I could not sleep. I tossed and I turned in my bed and could not shake specifically what I had learned and, and what I had seen um, regarding children in our state and their great need for, um, for family love and, and home and, and uh, all the brokenness that was there. And so God basically awakened me, and he said to me, Amy, <laughs> you need to do all that you can do, whatever good you can do. And I realized, you know, of course, I mean, God didn't leave us as orphans. He, he adopted us. He chose us. How could we not do the same after he's rescued us? All of the church, including myself, it wasn't just some specific few. All of us must do whatever good that we can. 
for the orphan. And I saw that need was including me, that I was called. And so I began to uh, search God's heart. What do you want me to do? I began to pray. And that's one of the things that we can all do is always pray. And it's really the first time that I began to en encounter God and his heart in prayer. Because prayer is not just about telling God what we want. It's about listening. And I began to lean in and just ask God to reveal to me his heart and what he wanted me to do. He told me that he had placed me in a place of influence for a reason, and I had a voice, and I could speak out on behalf of those who can't speak for themselves, and I became, became an advocate. And so many of you are advocates. And, you know, it seems like such a small thing, and I really just prayed by faith and thought, Lord, use this small little video, use this small little thing. But it was amazing. I have seen over the years those seeds that I have sown and just the, the prayer over those videos Time after time, families that have come up to me with children, adopted children or foster children, and the difference that it made because it stirred their heart and it awakened them, and the Spirit of God was upon those, uh, those messages when we speak out. So uh, when you advocate, do it with confidence. Do it knowing that you're going to make a difference, knowing that it's going to matter. We don't always get to see the results and hear about them, but I think that um, my message is to encourage you that we make a difference in our prayer. Uh, we make a difference when we lean in and listen to what His Spirit wants to say, not just what we are trying to get God to listen to. Because listen, this foster orphan thing is, is God's heart. It's His business. And we are privileged to join in with him in what he cares about. Another thing that I began to do is um, just open our hearts and home. And we, we don't personally at this time, and I would love to, uh, but we don't personally feel called to, to a full-time adopt or foster parent. But we've had foster kids in our home for one days and holidays, and it's been very significant. And before we drop the kids back off at the shelter, we've asked, you know, sweetie, how can we pray for you? These kids, they want to be back reunited with their families. And so one of the things that I heard God's voice stir in me was to start a home for women. And every woman that has been in our home, and this has only been in the last nine months of our transitional living home for women, they've all lost their kids because brokenness is brokenness and these women are broken and they've, they've not been able to parent. They've been uh, abused and, and under addictions themselves and they, um, they all want their children back. And it's been such a joy to see a few of these ladies already. And if you could just see their faces, if I could have them standing here before me, I have not seen a greater joy in a mother's eyes than her expression to me telling me I have a relationship with my children again. They're teens, but my son and my daughter will speak to me. They believe in me. It, it's incredible. And so, um, you know, we also, Craig and I, my husband and I, we began to step into supporting um, families that do adopt, families that do foster. Praise God for all that get involved in helping in whatever they ways they can to support and foster. So my prayer, as I lead by example, is that God has called me in specific ways. We don't all have to do it the same way, amen. We need to do it the way he calls us. That's the way that will be the most fruitful. But is that the church will awaken to God's heartbeat that we all must do whatever we can for the orphan. Thank you.